Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of um, my what is linear algebra series. So today, a very basic one, what is a matrix? And I will probably show you, or at least I hope, that I will show you some ways to view a matrix which you haven't seen before. Um, so let's just dive right into it. So what is a matrix? Well, the standard definition you will find is maybe the following. It's just, or really the one you should keep in mind for most practical purposes is the following. It's just a rectangle of numbers, right? So it's, it's, it's just to draw some rectangle, whatever. It could be a very trivial rectangle, like a one times one rectangle. And you put in some numbers in your rectangle. One, two, three, whatever. Uh, seven, uh, zero, zero, whatever, some numbers. And rectangle can have any shape, like it could be a square, maybe it's not a square, maybe it's really a rectangle, maybe it's extremely trivial, like just a one by one square, whatever, it's just, just a collection of numbers. That's essentially what a matrix is, collection of numbers, actually, Strictly speaking, it's a collection of some things that you can add and multiply. Don't really need to be numbers, but it's, it's certainly fine to think of it like as being a, a rectangle of numbers. Um, another way how I at least like to think about it is as follows. Um, I, I would like to think about it as a staircase function in 3D. And what I mean is I kind of imagined in this pictures that um, my rectangle lies in the plane, in the in the xy plane. And each entry basically, well, let's say it's a real number and then it gives me a height in, in, in some direction. So in the z direction, not in some direction, in the z direction. For instance, this one here, um, it has ones on the diagonal, or maybe this is not a good way of doing it. It has ones on the diagonal. And in the staircase picture, you see this here is a diagonal and it's of height one. Uh, the matrix lies like this. Now maybe I should use red. The matrix lies like this here and in this direction here. And you see kind of, if you look at the matrix, it, 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 well, if you really look at it, you see what's going on. But it's kind of much, much easier to see in this picture because what it really does, it kind of decreases as you move around, uh, if you, as you move away from the diagonal. You, you may see it here, like there's one over five, and one over five, and it's not just decreasing randomly, it decreases in a very nice, in a very nice way. And why I like this interpretation of a matrix is um, basically because in a lot of cases it tells you why some definitions of certain matrix matrices um, uh, well if you take a random matrix of course like to, like you put in some random numbers in, into a into a rectangle then you get a, a pretty much crazy looking picture here um, of course but sometimes your numbers look very random like, okay, yeah, here are some numbers. But actually, this, for instance, is called a Gaussian matrix because what it really does is it's, it's like, a, like a Gaussian here, like, like a little bump. And I really love the staircase picture of things because, no, or this 3D picture of things because in a lot of cases, it actually tells you why a certain definition of a certain matrix is actually reasonable. Um, but essentially a matrix, this kind of, these definitions are kind of equivalent, right? It's just a different way of illustrating it. Either I just put it in a rectangle and I write down the numbers, or I put, put it in a rectangle and I write down the numbers as heights. And that's kind of the same definition. Um, okay, looks pretty innocent. It's not quite clear why you should do that. You could, you can, of course. Um, the more geometric approach is why you should do that is that actually matrices encode actions on spaces. 
So you could think of, well, my answer number three is you could think of it as, as a B as a transformation of space itself. So a two by two matrix, this is kind of kind of a slightly non-standard point of view because well, not quite, but at least it, it, it kind of only really makes sense for square matrices and matrices are more general, they work for any rectangle, but let's forget that for now. Let's just say we like squares, well, certainly I like squares. And then it's kind of a transformation of space. What do I mean by that is, well, such a matrix here in a certain interpretation corresponds to a rotation of space itself. So this is kind of a vector field and you can see what this matrix is doing on this vector field. It rotates everything around the origin. Uh, a very similar matrix, the only thing I changed is I add this entry here, is kind of a, a scaled rotation. It rotates everything a little bit like a square. Oh, this is a really bad picture. You should just look at the picture. It just rotates um, not in a very, it, it rotates outwards. And it's kind of a scaled version, but it's still an actual space. So it's not just a collection of numbers in the in the square, but actually you can think of it acting on a space. Um, and the answer number four is it, and that's maybe uh, the the classical answer, which we will discuss in in another video. Um, it's actually it's a, it's an action on shapes. So it's a linear map. That's what well, it's a certain action on. Shapes. It's a shape, it's a linear map, what people usually say. And how should you read this? Well, this matrix, and here you have this matrix. So, so, um, so it can, this matrix kind of rotates, as you can see here, and this kind of rotates a little bit with an outward drift. And how can you see this? Well, you can think of having a certain shape, like this Pac-Man-like shape. And if you start here, then this matrix rotates the shape to this one. So um, my notation here is that the colors are uh, correspond to, to, to well, the, the darker color is the, the starting shape and the brighter color is the ending shape under the action of the matrix. So I start here and I end here. Similarly, I start here and I end here. And this is really exactly like this rotation on space, but now on shapes. It's very similar here, but now you rotate, and you can see it here as well, of course. You rotate and you, you, you kind of drift a little bit outwards, uh, scaling everything a little bit uh, into, into a certain direction. So a matrix in this sense is nothing else than a very, very, very smart way to encode an action on shapes. Um, you, you can't understand this unless you know how the relation between matrices and linear maps work. But for today, it's completely fine to think about a matrix as a, as a really, really efficient way to encode basically some geometric op uh, operation on, on, on vector spaces. Like, whether it is like on the vector space itself, like a transformation of a space, like answer three, or whether it is a transformation of, of certain shapes in your, in, your, um, in your vector space, like whatever, this Pac-Man like thing or vectors, right? So this basically comes from the matrices do something to vectors and drawing those shapes uh, correspond to have correspond to have chosen a, that I've chosen some 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 vector vector system and I could could express those shapes in, in terms of vectors. But I really really would like to think uh, would like you to think about a matrix as an operation, as an operation as a certain geometric operation. The definition is not random; it's just very efficient and in some sense. If you just think of it like a rectangle of numbers, you, then you can't, can't can't really understand, or at least I can't understand why there should be a well. Okay, you can do that, but why? The why is it encodes um, natural operations on on 
geometric operations on vector spaces and vector spaces are just in the end just an, an abstract version of, of like like our world like our three-dimensional world like r3 or in all of my pictures sadly r2 because i can only really illustrate in, in a very nice way a, a two-dimensional space okay um and if you think of a matrix as a, as a kind of an operation on something then you should be able to, to kind of, well, you have an operation, you can, you can adjust your operation a little bit. So a matrix, answer number five, is actually just an algebraic object. Nothing else, just something in the realm of algebra. And in the realm of algebra means that you allow certain operations on it which of course are mimicked, and I will, I will explain that in, in another video. They of course are mimicked to, to kind of encode this picture of, of action or this ge geometric incarnation of the matrix. But you could just forget all about that. We do, we do algebra, it's just some object with, some, with a certain set of, of legal moves you're allowed to do, legal operations. And the operations are multiplication by scalars, it's a very silly one. If you're a scalar, you take a times the matrix and you just, well, let's say two times the matrix is just you double all entries. So if you double 10, you double 11, uh, you double 12 and so on. So a kind of very silly operation. You just take two, you multiply it to, 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 your, to your entire matrix. You have addition of matrices. So it's an algebraic object. So you can add things. And it's again, a very silly operation. Um, you take your two entries, which are in the same position and you just add them, right? One and 10 are in the same position. So you get a new element 11, uh, whatever, 14 and five are in the same position. You said get a new element 19 plus. So, Again, kind of a very silly operation. Um, this makes sense from this point of view. That's easy to see. Like, well, if you scale everything, then you scale everything, right? That's kind of the first thing, the first operation. Um, there's an operation called mirroring, transposing. So transpose of a matrix is you draw a line in the middle of your matrix and you mirror around this line. That's, that's just the operation. So 16, for instance, goes from here to here because you mirror it around the line. All of those operations absolutely make sense if you think of, if you think in these terms. The only one that and also makes sense algebraically because they are pretty easy. You have a rectangle of, of algebraic objects that you can add, multiply. So just add and multiply them entry-wise. Uh, maybe that's, well, because you have a rectangle, you have a natural symmetry on the rectangle, which we just call transposing everything. Okay, so far so good, right? The transposing kind of gets rid of the, uh, kind of, kind of the choice what are rows and columns of your matrix. There shouldn't be a choice. Transposing gets rid of this choice. So those are really, really so those three, oh, transposing, here you go. Those three are really, really easy operations. And that's a little bit of, of, of a weird operation, which definitely deserves its own video, which is kind of the multiplication operation. And I've just written it down. But actually, um, for this video, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be worried too much. There's a way to multiply matrices. And it's not as easy as the other ones. Like, I don't, well, maybe that, that's too hard for me to do it. But I don't multiply 1 and 10 and get uh, 10. But I do it in a very different way. So this is not the right thing to do. And the way I want to do, or the, the reason I want to do this is, um, you will see, I kind of want to think of a matrix as being an operation on space and the multiplication of matrices as being doing one operation and then the other one. And in order to do this, because this matrix is this very efficient way of encoding this operation, you have a slightly weirdish looking multiplication. If you see it for the first time, it's certainly weird seems to fall out of the blue, um, but it isn't, it's built, it doesn't fall, it, it, 
it's it's built to encode the action of the action, the geometric interpretation of the matrix. Anyway, answer number five is maybe the answer you should keep in mind. Is like it's just an algebraic object, and you have certain operations on that algebraic object. And like with numbers, when you see well, all of you are now have seen numbers for most of your life, but when you when you first saw saw them, they're a little bit weird. And you really need to learn multiplication tables and so on. It's a bit painful. The same with matrices. They're a little bit weird if you see them for the first time. But I promise you, uh, they're really good and they're really important. And it, it's worthwhile to learn the multiplication table for matrices. Anyway, so the kind of the formal definition is, is this one. It's a, it's a rectangle of things. And the only thing that matters is that, uh, well, basically how people usually like to uh, to decode it, uh, encode it, namely how to write it down. And then what you usually do is they write something like mij, meaning the i is tells you in what row you live. So this is the i, and the j tells you in is what is right in in what row you you're in, and the j tells you in what column you're in. J, and this is just. It's just a different way of encoding a rectangle of things. Okay. Um, let me finish by telling you just a little bit about matrix multiplication. Again, this deserves an extra video. So um, basically made this funny matrix multiplication, which I haven't explained too much. Again, will be another video is to, to encode uh, um, composition of operations. So I take this matrix from before and I just take powers of it. So zero's power is I have a shape somewhere and I don't move it. And that's really the identity matrix. Uh, I showed you the first power, I moved the shape like I, I turn it 90 degrees and this was the original matrix. If I multiply the matrix with itself, this is this one, zero minus one. It is of course taking powers, of course, uh, uh, needs to have a definition of multiplication. And this is this matrix. Um, what is it What is it doing? It moves the object, the original object, 180 degrees, turns it around 180 degrees, which is the same as turning it around 90 degrees and then turning it around ag again 90 degrees. So here's our little Pac-Man. So this little Pac-Man is this little Pac-Man moved again once further 90 degrees. And the same for the third power. The third power is now taking the original object and turning it all the way around 270 degrees, which is the same as turning it around 90 degrees, turning it around 90 degrees, and turning it around um, yet again 90 degrees. And this is really how you should think about matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is this operation on spaces. Um, but a matrix is this operation on spaces, just encoded in a good way. And matrix multiplication is built such that composition of, of operations on spaces is, is uh, mirrored in the, the multiplication of matrices. But again, that deserves another video and I will definitely do another video. Um, but for now, thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you next time. Bye.